Lee, Lee, right here.
my honor to introduce Judge Carlos Polacondriotis. Carlos Polacondriotis worked with the Will County Drug Court for over a decade. She was also she was also a circuit cut court judge for the 12th Judicial District here in Will County. She was first elected in 2002 and retired from the bench this past August 3rd of 2018. In 2012, <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. in 2012 she established the Veterans Court and then in 2015 she established the Adult Redeploy Illinois Court. Now that Judge Carla Polacondriotis has retired, she's continuing her efforts in the community and in Will County. Today she's here to tell us about her newly formed scholarship and how she plans on giving back to the Will County Problem Solving Courts. And on a personal note, I just want to say something. As chair of the Judicial Committee, I've had the pleasure of working with Carla directly. I just want to say that I have found Carla to be one of the most kind and caring individuals that I've ever met. I know that uh, she really has a heart for the Problem Solving Courts, and I look forward to continuing working with her in the future. Year. Dear friends of mine hosted a retirement party for me and invited my colleagues, the legal community, and my family. Quite honestly, I fought the idea of a party pretty hard. Uh, though I'm not accustomed to being told no, uh, they insisted and I attended. It was a wonderful celebration of friendship, of family, and recovery. During the evening, I was presented with this check to memorialize the donation being made to the 501C known as Friends of Problem Solving Courts. The check is in the amount of $5,427.39. Yes, it's an odd amount. There were odd people there. <laughs> Literally, there was a bucket on the table and it overflowed. I'm so grateful I conceded to have a party because it was a group of very generous people who, like you, you recognize how important access to recovery is for those who are suffering, suffering from drug and alcohol addiction and mental illness. And that means so much, not just to me, but what it means to our community. It is the intention that these funds be unrestricted but for the direct need of the problem-solving court participants. I'll give you some examples that maybe some of the grant money or government money cannot be used for that I know is necessary to help people. It could be used for utility bill assistance, a cell phone bill. They can't get a job without a cell phone anymore. They finally convinced me of that. <laughs> Gasoline gift cards, maybe even some tuition at Julia Junior College. My very compassionate friends and the guests that were at the party have also committed to fundraising each year to continue the quote, Carla Scholarship. So I'm planning on returning each year, next year, and the year thereafter to report the results of their efforts. I'm here today not to brag about how great my friends are, but to proudly remind you that Will County is unique in that it's a public officials and private individuals but always remain committed to saving lives and saving families. Thank you very much. grandson to Harold. And lives in New Page, 
did a very big donation, raised a lot of money, and he said, I'm going to do something for Will Cummings. So with that, we were able to take this amazing $50,000 generous check and start the 501 c And it's snowballing, and we were just talking, we need a meeting, we need to raise some more. There's so many things in the hopper that are coming down the road that we can use these dollars for. Every life you can't put a price on. You can't put a price tag. So I'm so proud to be a part of this. I may be leaving the county board, but I will never leave this cause. County Board members Herb Brooks and Denise Winfrey will please come forward, present a check to Elois Crab from our Morning Star Mission. Elois? Elois. Oh, Elois. It is Elois. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Crab? Our mission. They're going to be building a garden so that residents can have some place to enjoy the weather and the outdoors as a part of their stay there. So this is $500. The project will be completed by a potential Eagle Scout candidate, Tom Earls. We are so thankful for this opportunity. Um, we have been talking about doing this garden for quite a long time, and then when Tom came to us, it was just a perfect match. And I think it's going to be a fantastic project that our families and our men can all get involved in, and then all the fresh produce that we're going to be able to produce that we can cook in our own kitchen and serve to the guests that we serve each and every day. So thank you so very much. Next, if county board member Chuck Mayer, please come to the podium, recognizing Louis Joliet Chapter National Society of the Art on Black Retirement Ceremony. Thank you, Barry. Um, actually, I'm going to turn this over to my colleague Suzanne Hart. It was her brainchild working with NAPO that got this started. Then. Program that NACO had came 
came up with as I was sitting in our membership committee was the retirement of the flag. And we also know of this morning job with my daughter. And the Navy, I, beyond, I've always had it very close to my heart, but now it's in my heart. Um, so with that, I brought back the box I had it sent and brought this out to the board. And of course, it was welcomed with open arms um, of taking the flags and getting retired properly. And the best thing is we come into the lobby every month and you would just see the box being used. And that was what was so important uh, for me, just to see that this was utilized and this has become a very successful program. And we were able to do our first retirement of the flags. Good segue. And so I would like to uh, invite Mary Earhart and her group to come down. Um, Mary is with the Daughters of the American Revolution. What a more appropriate group to come in and retire our flag. I mean, seriously, if it wasn't for our revolution, we wouldn't even have a flag. And so the fact that these folks have stepped up and, and come in and given us a way to actually um, retire our flags with honor, it's, it's an absolute privilege uh, to have you do that. And because we were figuring out, okay, we start collecting all these flags, what do we do? And we talked to Boy Scouts. I mean, the first thing was we've had so many Eagle Scouts come across our door here. You know, where do we want to go with this? But um, talking with Lana, and Lana, I, I want you to stand up and join us. Lana is part of the uh, Daughters of the American Revolution and as well as one of our staff members. And she goes, well, let me talk to our director, our district director, and see what we can do. And so I think as Suzanne and I kind of leave uh, the board after in November, uh, I would love to see these guys continue to be a partner and a member of this whole process. And so it's with that that we decided we wanted to actually do a formal res uh, resolution and proclamation. And whereas the US flag code states that when a flag is so worn, it is no longer fit to serve as a symbol of our country, it should be destroyed by removing the union of the flag and the burning of dignified and is burning in a dignified manner. And whereas on July 2017, the Will County Board began collecting worn and torn U.S. flags from Will County residents to ensure proper disposal and retirement. And whereas on July 2018, the board collected over 50 U.S. flags in need of proper disposal. And whereas the Will County Board reached out to the Louis Joliet chapter of National Society of Daughters of the American Revolution and ask for their assistance. And whereas on uh, August 18, 2018, the Louis Joliet chapter of the NSDAR held a ceremony in Plainfield, Illinois to retire over 50 flags. And whereas during the ceremony, chapter region and chapter members ensured proper disposal by removal of the union and placing the stripes on the fires, the names of the original 13 states were read. And whereas the county board and Louis Joliet chapter and SDAR will continue to partner in collecting and properly disposing of U.S. flags in accordance with the U.S. flag code. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Will County Board and the Will County Executive recognizes the Louis Joliet chapter National Society Daughters of America Revolution for their efforts to ensure the U.S. flags no longer fit to serve as a symbol of our county, of our country, were destroyed in a dignified manner. It furthermore resolved that the Will County Board and the Will County Executive ask for the Will County citizens to respect the U.S. flag by ensuring all born flags are disposed of properly. Date. This day, 20th day of September, 2018. Second. Move and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Contrary. Motion has carried. Thank you very much. Mary? Good morning, Will County, and thank you. I want to thank Will County for allowing us the opportunity to partner with them and to make sure that we are serving our community as well as respecting our flag and carrying on the patriotism of this country. We do thank all of you for this opportunity and um, we've already pretty much said what we, we had done. Um, we, when Lana called me in July, I was like, um, 
Most of these organizations do that on June 14th or November 11th. <laughs> I said, how soon do you want it done? She said, yesterday. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> so I talked to my resident fire pit, AKA husband, and he said, if we get the perfect day when it's not raining and it's not windy and it's not, not 90 degrees and humid, we can make it happen. And we did, and that did happen in August. And I am just grateful to Will County for allowing us a partnership with you to do these things. Thank you so much, everyone. Now, the county board member, Matt Parker, and Lauren Staley Ferry will please come to the podium, recognize Fairmont Community Group Partnership on the receipt of a, the NAACP award. And they would please come down. <coughs>
Thank you to District 9 Rep. Annette Parker and Lauren Staley Berry for your unwavering support of the Fairmont community. With your bipartisan support, we have been able to address some real problems in Fairmont, beginning with decent and afford affordable housing. <coughs> Due to the economic crisis, decreasing property values, causing owners to become upside down on mortgages, loss of jobs, and escalating health insurance premiums and prescription costs placing great stress on families and seniors. Many Will County residents had to place home upkeep and repairs on the back burner. As a result, some things have stopped <coughs> in the cracks for years. These conditions have taken a toll on many residents of Will County, and Fairmont was no exception. Let me be clear, not everyone living in Fairmont needs a hand up. However, many do. We remain in Fairmont because it provides a safe place for us to live. Fairmont is wedged between Juliet and Lockport, yet we have been left on our own for decades. The goal of the Fairmont Community Partnership Group is to maintain the peaceful existence we have enjoyed for many years in a safe and clean environment. With enough residents enrolled in the process, Fairmont can be the best little neighborhood in Will County. If we succeed, we all succeed. If we fail, everyone is rolling the dice on who and what comes next. Fairmont's future looks bright. The new garden, funded by We Will Grow School and Community Garden Program, is supplying fresh vegetables weekly at the food pantry. TED alumni Natalie Coleman is offering an after-school STEM program at the Fairmont Community Center. Lewis University is providing student helpers at the community garden. Lewis is continuing an after-school homework program at Fairmont School. Fairmont community group members and others are reading with Fairmont students. Shiloh Church is providing a basketball camp with an emphasis on academics and homework completion. Thank you to all the young working Fairmont community group members and seniors who are unable to join us but support us whenever they can. Thank you to all Will County board members and a special thank you to Kathy Pecora. Kathy Pecora. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see you. Okay. Right. A special thank you to Kathy Pecor, Program Manager for the Community, Community Development Division and Coordinator of the We Will Grow School and Community Garden Program at Will County Land Use. That name alone, that title lets you know how much work she does. <laughs> Kathy, thank you for being at the forefront of so many of the great things happening in Fairmont. I would also like to thank Will County Center for Community Concerns, Lockport Township Park District, Highway Department, Sheriff's Will County, Shriver National Center on Poverty Law, Sue Lafferty and the Daily South Town, videographer Grant Spooner, and Habitat for Humanity for helping us achieve some of our dreams in Fairmont. United Way is installing a free little library at the garden next month, and Habitat for Humanity is hosting Lock the Block in the coming weeks. Lastly, but certainly not least, thank you NAACP President Mike Clark for awarding us the Outstanding Community Involvement Award. Receiving an award from an organization that has been fighting for people of color since 1909 means more than I can say. Will County Board, thank you for making Fairmount a priority.
2016-2018 County Board meeting have been signed by the County Board. Any support from John Michelle will begin. There you go. We had the magic twist of the Good morning, Speaker, Eustace, County Board members, elected officials, and residents of Will County. Today, I present my proposed fiscal year 2019 budget. With my remarks today, I will give you a high-level overview of what I'm proposing and the next steps that I believe we must take to keep Will County moving forward. The budget I present today is balanced. The total county budget is $565 million, of which $201 million is in the corporate fund and $364 million is in special funds. This year's budget proposal meets all our debt obligations, contributes additional dollars towards our other post-employment benefits funds, and dedicates funding for IMRF accelerated payments. We also continue to meet our cash reserves of 22 to 26 percent of our corporate budget. The county continues to maintain a double A plus bond rating. Rating agencies such as Moody's and Standard and Forbes have commented that the county on our stable fund balances, controlled expenditures, long-term planning, and strong fiscal policy. This is a testament to the fiscally responsible approach the county board and the county executive office has taken over the recent years. As you are aware, the 2018 budget reflected a reduction in revenue of about $2.4 million to, due to the impact of the state of Illinois financial troubles. The General Assembly approved a 10% reduction in the local governmental di distribution front fund and to a 2% administrative fee on sales tax in the RTA fund. With the passing of the state's 2019 budget, the local distributive fund payment reduces from 10% to 5%, and 2% administrative fee is being cut to 1.5%. Revenue projections for these revenue streams are forecasted with the assumed new percentages. I want to thank and commend our employees for continuing to do an outstanding job providing the critical services for our residents during these challenging times. You are what makes Will County government shine. Leadership met earlier this month to discuss the 2018 levy. It was decided that CPI and new property would be taken. My levy proposal includes <coughs> $1.8 million in new property, and 2.5 million in CPI. This translates to an increase in actual levy of $4.3 million. From this total of 4.3, 3.6 million will be put into the corporate fund, 
500,000 will be put into the capital fund and the remaining 200,000 has been allocated to the FICA and IMRF funds. With an expected increase in the EAV, the proposed levy of our new property and CPI, the 2018 tax rate will be 0 0.5898, which is lower than the 2017 rate of 0 0.5986. For the fifth year in a row, my budget proposal includes a five-year road and capital plan, which recognizes both ongoing and future capital projects, establishes an amount, annual amount, for vehicle and equipment replacement and identifies dedicated sources to fund those projects in 2019. This five-year capital plan is a working document that will be reviewed by the board and revised as we work through the 2019 budget process. It will continue to be updated as new projects and funding sources are identified. However, this plan is only appropriated one year at a time and will be used as a resource when the county is required to make decisions about funding upcoming projects. As we all are aware, over the last couple of the years, the county began the process of the building will plan to address our major capital needs, such as the public safety complex, courthouse, health department, animal control, and EMA. The completion of the new public safety complex was the first project in, begin in the beginning phase of this plan. We are making great progress on the courthouse. The ground breaking for the health department is planned to begin late fall. Animal control and EMA is scheduled to begin early spring of 2019. The 2019 budget includes funding for these capital projects. Since the issuance of the 2010 road bonds, we have been averaging approximately $20 million per year for highway design and construction. The bid letting of the Weber Road I-55 project was completed by IDOT earlier this year. Preliminary work will begin in October and major construction is anticipated to start in the spring of 2019. With a county contribution es estimated at 45 million, we must keep significant expenditure authority for our road and bridge project. Therefore, I am proposing $32 million in budget authorization for the Will County Transportation Division. That will continue the great progress we have made on improving the county transportation infrastructure. As I had mentioned before, we must continue to invest in modern technology to increase efficiency of service and streamline processes. Key projects that are now underway this year include a new financial management system, which kicked off implementation in August, a new case management system to support the services in the new courthouse for the state, State's Attorney, Public Defender, and Probation Departments, which will begin implementation in the upcoming months. By investing in technology, we provide the tools necessary for our employees to succeed. This budget includes funding for these systems. Yeah, these systems. I want to point out a few other facts that I'm sure the board will want to know about the budget proposal. The 2019 corporate fund budget reflects an overall increase of 2.4% from the prior year. The budget does not include the use of any cash reserves to balance the budget. 
adequately funds overtime for various departments, includes a contribution of $1 million to the other post-employment benefits fund for 2019, allocates $2 million to IMRF, accelerated payments necessary to meet our obligations when long-time employees retire. Revenue remains relatively flat with a slight increase in intergovernmental re revenue and a slight decrease in charges for service. The combined salary and fringe benefits continue to be steady at 79% of our total corporate expenditures. This is the eighth consecutive year that we have been able to keep salaries and fringes in the 76 to 79 percent range of our total corporate expenditures, which remains an improvement from years past where we exceeded 82 percent or more. Expenses increased by $3.5 million for salaries, and which covers previous contractual and exempt wage increases. Fringe benefit remains relatively uh, flat. They are, there is a small increase in supplies, professional and technical, 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 their services, <laughs> and other purchases services. As we move forward, my staff is available to answer questions and explain, explain the rationale for what I have proposed today. As many of you already know, our budget director, Rashawn Howard, has scheduled an informational session on Wednesday, September 26th at 9 a.m. to share more of the details of uh, my proposal. I am hopeful that the board members will take advantage of this opportunity to ask questions and share feedback so that we can work to get together to finalize the 2019 budget. Finally, I would like to thank Budget Director Rashawn Howard for all her hard work. Many months ago, she began this process, working with the countywide elected officials and department heads. In addition, I would like to recognize and thank Melissa Johansson from the county board staff who is also deeply involved in the budget process and who will now take my budget proposal and assist the county board as we work toward a final agreement. Rishon and Melissa work very closely to ensure we have a smooth budget process. All of the staff that help create the budget deserve a credit for the work that goes into getting us to this point. I remain optimistic that with continued cooperation of the county board members and our elected officials, 2019 will represent a milestone for the future of Will County. Thank you. Sure, Mayor. 
I heard of I heard you. <laughs> Brooks? Yeah. Scala? Yes. Summers? Yes. Bryce? Yes. Harris? Yes. Stringer? Yes. Benefield? Yes. Fritz? Yes. Gould? Yes. Militello? Yes. Ballage? Yes. Midloom? Yes. Winfrey? Yes. Parker? Yes. Stanley Ferry? Yes. Dollinger? Yes. Markham? Yes. Hart? Now, yes. Michael, yes. Perry, yes. Yes. Thank you. 24 affirmative. 24 affirmative. We are in public hearing. Please be advised, absolutely no new evidence or information will be allowed once this land use uh, public hearing is closed. We have two cases to be heard today. CC 18-042. ZC 18-044. And I, we have, uh, have one down, John, uh, Mr. Johnson uh, Roberts. Um, Mr. Jonathan <coughs> Roberts. If you can just, if you are here for just if, if there are questions arise. No questions. Okay. Right. Is there anybody from the public? Anybody from the public that wishes to speak on either of these two cases? Anyone from the public that wishes to say something on these two cases? Anyone wishing to speak? Mr. Weigel? I make a motion to close the public hearing. Vote we'll moved by Mr. Weigel, second by Mr. Ballish. Madam Clerk, call the vote. Sure, Mayor? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Miguel? Yes. Summers? Yes. Rice? Yes. Harris? Yes. Trainer? Yes. Benefield? Yes. Fritz? Yes. Poole? Yes. Lillicello? Yes. Ballage? Yes. Bisalone? Yes. Winfrey? Yes. Parker? Yes. Staley Perry? Yes. Dollinger? Yes. Markham? Yes. Hart? Yes. Tuminello? Yes. Weigel? Yes. Berry? Yes. Coatis? Yes. And Eustace? Yes. Thank you. 24 affirmative. 24 affirmative. Um, public hearing has been closed. Continue with the wide please. Our first case is a special use permit for a major public utility and solar farm in Cottage Grove, <coughs> Main Street. Uh, committee recommends approval and I so move. Moved by Mr. Weigel. Second by Second. Second by Ms. O'Gala. Any discussion? Any discussion? Previous roll by Mr. Trainier, <laughs> second by Ms. Rice. So all in favor signify by saying aye. Contrary motion has carried. Our <coughs> second case is a special use permit for major public utility, a solar farm in Moynihan Township. Committee recommends approval and I so move. Moved by Mr. Weigel. Second. Second, second by Ms. Summers. Uh, any discussion? Any discussion? Previous, oh, Ms. Sogala. Yeah, I thought I'd take the opportunity right now to discuss a little bit about what happened in our last land use committee meeting. Um, one of the things that we have, as a board have not done is that we've not uh, looked at the situation as far as location of some of these proposed solar farms. Um, residents have been concerned with the location as to where it might be close to an existing um, forest preserve. Some people have said that there's an issue with certain solar farms being located in certain certain areas because of uh, safety. Because of that, we did uh, table a solar farm at committee. We need to have that discussion as a group to make to see what everyone feels <coughs> we need to look at whether we should continue to prove them or if there's certain situations we need to say that this is a particular location that does not fit the land <coughs> purposes that we might feel is safe for our residents. Um, I just wanted to make everyone aware of that because everyone's at land use committee to that discussion that we have amongst each other. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? Anyone else? Anyone else? Previous <coughs> roll by Mr. Maltello, second by Mr. Gould. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, motion has carried. Our next. Uh, we have a resolution, 18-192. This is concerning the uh, location of bees on property in the county. Uh, 
I, I found some discrepancies in the resolution and the <coughs> committee had approved in the past. So I'd like to remand that back to the committee. I'll make that motion. Second. Moved by Mr. Weigel, second by Ms. O'Gala. Any discussion? Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, motion has carried. Our next resolution, 18-240, is uh, concerning amending our zoning ordinance for auto salvage by adding auto rebuilders. Uh, committee recommends approval, and I so move. Moved by Mr. Weigel, second by Ms. Trainer. Oh. Yep. Second by Mr. Mayor. Questions? Questions? Ms. Trainer? Yes, uh, I'm not going to be voting in favor of this motion. I don't feel that there is a, enough cause to warrant somebody wanting to work on cars to be only classified and be able to have their car lot in, next to a refinery. Um, that's very limiting in, <coughs> in terms of people's use of their personal property that they pay taxes on. I just don't feel that it's warranted. Um, you know, if you have the hobby of repairing or fixing cars, that you have to have that facility located next to a refinery doesn't doesn't work for me. So I won't be voting yes for that. Any other discussion? Any other discussion? I don't believe that there's a requirement. Can I can I ever to clarify that because I don't remember seeing that? Oh. Yeah. I'll let the, Mr. Weigel, Weigel, do you understand what? I, I don't know where she found that information. Um, actually, in caucus this morning, I was advised that I3 is heavy industrial and that it would be property similar to a refinery. That's what I was told by the landlord. Well, that's, that's one of one of, one of them. It could be other other locations. I don't know. She didn't mention any others. Um, I believe just refinery was mentioned. So I can't support that. I I don't think people should, you know, be required. Mm -hmm. You know, restricted to only being able to have a car hobby if they live next to a refinery. But, but the ordinance isn't restricting that. that, 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 that says that, that it has to be by an I uh, an I three. Why do say not saying that's, that's not true, Jackie? Well, that's what I read in here, and nobody contradicted it in the office this morning. Brian, come forward, please. I know. <coughs> Good morning, board members. Uh, Brian Reiner from the Land Use Department. I just wanted to clarify this matter a little bit. The auto rebuilder is different from auto repair. Auto repair is already permitted uses in many districts. The auto rebuilder is uh, a person that would take a vehicle that doesn't have a title and rebuild it back up and have it retitled. So what this ordinance does is permit this use now before it had been classified as like a junkyard. Uh, by state definition, so it's been reclassified and now it would be permitted as a permitted use in I-1, I-2, and I-3 districts, but if you want to do it outside, then it's only allowed in I-3, meaning you can't rebuild cars outside in an I-1 or I-2 district, but you might be able to do it in I-3 if you get a special use permit. It just seemed very restrictive to me. I can't support it. Brian, just to you know, maybe clarify a little bit what you're saying is, with, with this um, uh, amendment done, it allows auto rebuilders in the I-3 industrial uh, classification. It, it'll actually allow as a permitted use in I-1, I-2, and I-3 if it's okay. inside of a building. Meaning, a picture um, somebody bringing in a bunch of cars and keeping them outside, we're saying that you can only do that in I-3. <coughs> if you can do it inside of a building, it would be permitted in I-1, I-2, and I-3. The I-3 is our heaviest industrial. That's correct. I mean, there's many different things, fertilizer plants, you know. Uh, I mean, so if you look at all the, the all, everything that's permitted in I-3, it's a pretty heavy use. Right. And, it's, it, and we're pretty selective. At least we have it in the past. We've been pretty selective where I-3 is located. Yep, and board member Mustis, I'd like to say, just think about, would you want to have this type of auto rebuilding take place outside of a building in I-1 zoning district, which many times are located near residential areas. So 
what this is saying is you can do that use if you can do it inside of a building in the I-1, I-2, Mr. Mayor, and, and I just want to thank you for that. Makes a whole lot of sense. I mean, we don't want to see junk cars that are outside parked all over the place so that people can take parts out to rebuild. That, and putting that inside, it makes a whole lot of sense. Um, but if you're in a heavy industrial area, you're not going to be impacting a whole lot of folks. And we've already got junkyards in that area, I believe. And aren't junkyards? Part yeah, of that? Uh, junkyards are a use that is typically I three. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's 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 actually it sounds more like a clarification. So people can actually expand their ability to do the job without having to come for special. Th use. Yeah, this is exactly what I would say is a clarification because we the department hasn't been able to sign off on some Secretary of State forms that would allow this use because pre previously it was only classified as a junkyard in an out in a, in I3 zoning. So the rebuilder classification um, will be Actually, will now be in the zoning ordinance and allow the I1, I2, I3 permitted and I, I3 special use if you want to do it outside if the board approves this. Thank you. Mr. Ballot. So, so sorry, Mr. Mayor, so somebody is happy and they just happen to work on rebuilding a car, like I said, my, my cousin actually, he, he does this in his garage, and he takes an old antique car and he remodels it, well, puts, puts new parts on it, makes it back. That person can still do it at, he can still do it in his Yeah, car. I mean, that's a totally separate, <coughs> completely. You know, it's, you know, somebody repairing their own vehicle on their property. Mm -hmm. Ms. Trainier? I would just wonder why an I-1 and an I-2 wouldn't also satisfy um, what you're looking for in terms of the auto rebuilder with outdoor storage. You're saying storing the vehicles outside or you're having storage facilities? Well, well what could happen is, so our I-1 and I-2 areas are typically located in areas that are more compatible with the surrounding land uses, where the I-3 uses are heavy industrial uses. So. You don't want to have a bunch of scrap vehicles in an area where I-1 zoning is very typically located around residential zoning districts. I can think of Wheatland Industrial Park, there's plenty in New Lenox, uh, they're around Joliet. So you definitely don't want to have those uses mixed. So that's why um, the ordinance that went forward before the committee is saying, it's okay if you can do this inside of your building so you're not making uh, the surrounding area look uh, maybe in a manner that people don't like to see scrap vehicles inside. So you're so, trying to keep it looking nice. So you're saying if there is a building on the property and it's an I-1 or I-2, then they can do their auto restoration. Exactly. But th this is completely separate from auto repair. Those are already permitted uses. No, I'm not talking about repair. I, I'm, I'm talking about the rebuilding of well, actually, this is really a completely different use, uh, and we learned about this recently because um, people, uh, owners of businesses were buying cars that had been determined to be junk and salvage, but they didn't have a title, so they rebuilt those vehicles, and now they get a new title, and so they be able to do that is the zoning didn't allow it in certain districts, so we're working with the uh, um, business owners in the county to try and allow this in more districts, but be respectful and keep the area looking nice in areas where maybe it wouldn't be compatible. Call question. Ms. Nolotello. I, I just want to say that um, everybody is welcome to come to land use meetings, and I would love to see more board members come and maybe give really good explanations of what we actually see, what we actually hear. Is this not what people say at first thought? This is not somebody trying to fix the car. To rebuild a car, you need several junk cars to build, rebuild one car. So we're not talking about somebody gets one junk car to rebuild a car. It takes several of them. So that is, you know, that's a little different issue than, you know, taking a junk car and rebuilding one car and one more car. It takes several of them to do that. Thank you. Motion and second and on the floor. Madam Clerk, call the roll, will you please? Sure. Max Mayor? Yes. Brooks? Yes. O'Gara? Yes. Summers? Yes. 
Bryce? Yes. Harris? Yes. Trainier? No. Benefield? Yes. Fritz? Yes. Gould? Yes. Molotello? Yes. Ballage? Yes. Rizalone? Yes. Winfrey? Yes. Parker? Yes. Daily Carey? Yes. Ballinger? Yes. Markham? Yes. Hart? Yes. Timonello? Yes. Weigel? Yes. Perry? Yes. Colitis? Yes. And Eustis? Yes. Thank you. 23 affirmative, one negative. 23 affirmative, motion has carried. Please continue, Mr. Michael. Uh, next resolution, 18-241, uh, concerns uh, home occupations. We're making some minor changes there concerning parking and uh, uh, signage. The uh, committee recommends approval and I so move. Moved by Mr. Weigel, second by Ms. Dollinger. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Markham, second by Mr. Harris. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary. Yes. 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 Next up, Finance Committee, Mr. Frizzalone, Chairman. Good morning, Will Jump. Good morning, Michael. Uh, first up, we have some monthly financial reports to place on file. The first one is a report from the Illinois Department of Revenue showing sales tax remitted to Will County for the month of June 2018 to be $1,886,567.36. RTA tax received is $2,212,828.25 for a total of $4,099,395.61. We also have the monthly report dated July 31st from the Treasurer, Simon Weber. Uh, I'd like to put the on file, and I so move. Moved by Mr. Frizzalone, second by Mr. Mayor. All in favor of saying, signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, motion is carried. Now we'll move on to abating the taxes uh, for our bonds here. So first up, 18-241, abating the taxes here before levy to tax levy year 2018 for the year 2019. To pay that service on 71,430,000 outstanding principal amount of GO transportation improvement bonds. And I so move. Moved by Mr. Prisolome, second by Mr. Mayor. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Winfrey, second by Mr. Brooks. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion is carried. 18-243, abating taxes here before levy and tax levy year 2018. For the year 2019 to pay debt service on $13,930,000 outstanding principal amount of GO refunding bonds, series 2012, and I so move. Moved by Mr. Frizzalone, second by Mr. Gould. Any questions, any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Tumanello, second by Ms. Fritz. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary motion has carried. 18 244, abating the tax service for levied in tax levy year 2018 for year 2019. To pay debt service on 5,480,000 outstanding principal amount of GO funding bonds, series 2014, and I so move. Moved by Mr. Frizzalone, second by Ms. Dallinger. Any questions? Any questions? Previous <coughs> roll by Mr. Ms. Summers, sir. Second by Ms. Rice. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion is carried. 18 245, abating the tax and for levy to tax levy year 2018 for the year 2019. To pay debt service on $16,565,000 outstanding principal amount on GO refunding bonds series 2015A. And I so move. Moved by Mr. Frizzalone. Second by Ms. Hart. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Trenier, second by Mr. Markham. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, motion carried. At 18 246, pay the tax service for levy to tax levy year 2018. For the year 2019, to pay debt service in the amount of uh, uh, $173,975,000. Outstanding principal amount on GO funding bond series 2016, I assume. Moved by Mr. Frizzalone, second by Mr. Ballard. Any questions? Any questions? Previous row by Ms. Bogala, second by Mr. Benefield. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Every motion has carried. We have 18 247, which is transferring appropriations for the various county budgets, budgets for this uh, mid year transfers. And I so move. Move by Mr. Frizzalone, second by Ms. Winfrey. Any questions? Any questions? Previous row by Mr. Harris. 
second by Miss Summers. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. The contrary motion has carried. Yeah, we have several meetings coming up. As the executive mentioned, uh, Rashawn's going to be doing a budget workshop on the roll-up on September 26th at 9 a.m. Uh, the next finance committee meetings are scheduled for October 2nd, the regular meeting, and we'll also do one October 16th to talk about revenues and expenses again as we break it down more. And as always, I'm available if you have questions on the budget. Give me a couple days so I can dig in, and then I'll be able to answer any questions that you might have. So I have to be there. Thank you very much, Mike. Next up, Public Works and Transportation Committee, Mr. Gould, the Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Executive. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. John, fellow board members. I'd like to place on file a proposed issuance of a federally enforceable state operating permit for Interstate Chemical uh, Shanahan River Terminal in Shanahan, Illinois. Moved by Mr. Gould, second by Ms. Melitello. Any questions? Any questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion has carried. Resolution 18248, Brandon County Aid and Construction of a Bridge over the Dupage River on Shepley Road is petitioned by the Detroit Township Road District, County Board 6. I move for approval. Moved by Mr. Gould, second by Ms. Melitone. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Rice, second by Ms. Lawrence Mary Staley Perry. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Con contrary motion has carried. Solution 18249, Granny County Aid and Construction of a Bridge over Deer Creek and King's Road as petitioned by the Creek Township Road District, County Board District, Kuban, I move for approval. Moved by Mr. Gould, second by Ms. Summer. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. O'Gala, second by Mr. M Tum Tuminello. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary motion has carried. Resolution 18250, authorizing the approval of the establishment of an altered speed zone 557, County Board District 1. I move for approval. Moved by Mr. Gould, second by Ms. O'Gall. Any questions? Any qu <laughs> Ms. O'Gall, is that a question? No comment. Oh. I just wanted to say uh, thanks to Jeff uh, Ronaldson and his department for recognizing the fact this is right in front of the new Amazon facility and it's a short distance there. It's 55 and it's really way too fast for all the traffic there now, so I, I appreciate them recognizing this and move to make a change in the speed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Previous roll by Ms. Summers, second by Mr. Markham. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion has carried. Resolution 18251, granting a variance for the proposed Fuller's car wash on Weber Road, County Board District 9. Move for approval. Moved by Mr. Gould, second by Ms. Staley Ferry. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Malatello, second by Ms. Dollinger. All in favor, signify <coughs> by saying aye. Aye. The contrary motion has carried. Resolution 18252, authorizing approval of supplemental professional services agreement for design engineering services with Hutchinson Engineering on Mills Road at the intersection of Bridge Street in County Board District 8. Move for approval. Moved by Mr. Gould, second by Ms. Winfrey. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Brooks, second by Ms. Rice. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, motion has carried. Resolution 18253, authorizing the county executive to execute a drainage agreement with Commonwealth Edison Company in the County of Will, County Board District 7. I move for approval. Moved by Mr. Gould, second by Mr. Tumanel. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Mr. Perry, second by Ms. Summers. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, Perry, no motion has carried. Resolution 18254, granting a temporary access permit for Highland Ridge on 143rd Street in County Board District 7. Moved by Mr. Gould, second by Ms. Parker. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Hart, second by Ms. Winfrey, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary motion is carried. Concludes <coughs> my report. Our next meeting is October 2nd at 9 o'clock. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. Next up, Judicial Committee. Mr. Benefield, Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Executive. Good morning, Chairman. Fellow board members. We have no items to present to the board this morning. Our next scheduled judicial meeting is for October 2nd at 9 a.m. We hope to see you there. Okay. Thank you very much. Next up, Public Health and Safety Committee, Ms. O'Gallon, Chairperson. Good morning. Good morning. 
I had two reports to be placed on about today. The first report is Will County Regional Office of Education report April 1st, 2018 to June 30th, 2018, submitted by Dr. Shaw Walsh, Regional Superintendent of Schools, and also the Will County Regional Office of Education annual report 2017 to 2018. I so move. Move by Mr. Missoka, second by Mr. Ballage. Any questions? Any questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary motion is carried. I have a uh, resolution 18-255 awarding services for CNN, LPM, and RN at Sunny Hill Nursing Home. This is uh, this is the agency that we use to help supplement our nursing staff at the Sunny Hill Nursing Home. Um, and I, I would like to make a motion to place to, to move that over. Open this motion to approve. Yes, sir. Okay, moved by Miss O'Gallo, second by Miss Summers. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Miss Rainier, second by Mr. Harris. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion has carried. Now, there's another thing that I'd like to uh, just mention today. You know, after a month at my public health and safety committee meeting, we had a report from Dr. Kathleen Burks on the different um, the efforts being made with the opioid um, opioid crisis that we have. Occasionally, we also have the sheriff's department coming, giving us facts and figures from their from their perspective as well. So recently, we had a Will County mechanic who saved an overdose victim just days after receiving training. This individual happened to be driving past, saw somebody laying in a park, came across this, uh, the lady, who said that the person was intoxicated. He thought the person was having difficulty breathing. Gave a dose of Narcan. The person improved, gave a second dose of Narcan. The person came around and was taken to the hospital. So the efforts that we're making here at Will County on the opioid crisis and using Narcan and the training that's happening, both with Dr. Campbell and the Sheriff's Department, is really a positive. I hope that moving forward, though, what we end up doing is, is finding solutions to get these, these people so they are not addicted to heroin and other opioids very, very, it's just, it's so life altering that, you know, you're in a park and you can overdose and thank goodness this guy was driving past. I just want to say that thank you to everybody who works on that effort and making that happen for us. Thank you, Judy. Thank Thanks. you very much. Next, the Will County uh, Public Health and Safety Committee meeting is scheduled for October 4th at 9 a.m. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, <coughs> Legislative Policy Committee. Ms. Hart, Chairperson. Good morning. Everyone. Thank you. Uh, real quick, we just had our meeting this month where we had our federal and our state consultants come in and give a rundown of what was happening in DC as well as Springfield, not much going on in Springfield. And talking with our various uh, department heads to go and get set the priorities for next year. So that'll be uh, an ongoing 14 meetings. Our next meeting will be scheduled for legislative on October 9th at 9 a.m. Thank you very much. <laughs> next up, next up, Capital Improvement Committee, Mr. Tumanel, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, first in the packet is the Will County Capital Improvements Project Summary dated September 20th. It's in your packet if anyone would like to know any information on where we're at with the capital projects. First is uh, Resolution 18-256, authorizing Will County Executive to amend contract with Kluver Architects and Engineers to include services for specialty sub-consultants and additional services by Kluver during construction and post-construction phases for the new Will County Health Department. And I so move. Moved by Mr. Tumanello, second, second by Ms. Winfrey. Any questions? Any questions? Previous row by Ms. Summers, second by Mr. Ferry. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion has carried. Next is 18-257, authorizing the Will County Executive to amend contract with Farnsworth Group to include building commissioning services for the new Will County Health Department facility, and I so move. Moved by Mr. Tumanello, second by Ms. Winfrey. Any questions, any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Summers and second by Ms. Parker, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion has carried. 
Next is 18 258, authorizing the Will County Executive to amend contract with Barnesworth Group to include building commissioning services for the new Will County Animal Control Facility and EMA storage building project. And I so move. Moved by Mr. Tumanello, seconded by Ms. Fritz. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Ogala, second by Ms. Rice. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, motion has carried. Next is 18-259, authorizing the County Executive to execute a professional services agreement with Harbor Contractors Incorporated for construction management services required for the New Will County Animal Control Facility and Emergency Management Equipment Storage Building Project. And I so move. Moved by Mr. Tumanello, seconded by Mr. Gould. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Dollinger, second by Ms. Melotello. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary motion has carried. Next is 18-260, authorizing the Will County Executive to amend contract with the White & Company for additional on-site uh, services during construction and post-construction project phases. And I so move. Moved by Mr. Tumanello, second by Ms. Winfrey. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll uh, by Mr. Harris, second by Mr. Brooks. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. The contrary, motion has carried. I just got a couple of things. Uh, first, if anyone has had a chance to watch Southland TV, uh, they interviewed uh, Mr. Brooks and I at the courthouse. Uh, it was streaming on the internet uh, last week. Anybody who watches it will realize quickly why Mr. Brooks and I have a face for radio. Uh, <laughs> However, while we were there, uh, Ms. Dollinger was there uh, getting a tour. I would like to open it up to any one of the board members here, not just the Capital Committee. Anytime you're interested in taking a tour and seeing the progress at the Will County Courthouse, uh, contact David Tack and Greg and Fry Tag, and they'll be able to set that up. It was absolutely worth it. It was stunning. Uh, next, our construction manager on the Courthouse Project is a national industry leader in uh, safe job site practices. Thankfully, we have an outstanding safety record on our courthouse uh, projects thus far, and we are aiming to keep it that way. On Friday, <laughs> September 14th, regional OSHA officials joined by an experienced safety professional representing the Illinois Department of Labor were invited by the construction manager, along with those who signed the project labor agreement, to provide their shared commitment to what matters most, our project safety. Uh, hopefully, we can continue to, to go down the path of project safety. I think we've got a great safety team in place. And uh, I know the Department of Labor recognizes that as well. Lastly, uh, after receiving a couple uh, emails that uh, quite frankly frustrated me and, and disturbed me, I thought they were irresponsible. Uh, at committee, I have authorized staff to send out a, an invite to everybody in this room, not just the Capitol Committee. Uh, as you know, Mr. Executive, I work with both sides very well. I try to make it conclusive, uh, conducive to having everybody involved. Uh, and I wanted to make sure that not only our committee was uh, open to us, but everybody was involved in the topic off party. So after seeing those, I figured I'd come out here and get some information uh, so everybody understands fully what it is. And I believe that everyone should be out there. On Friday, October 19th at 9 a.m., uh, the time has changed from 11 o'clock to 9 a.m. It was a change that was sent down. I want everyone to, if possible, to meet by a construction trailer on Joliet South Street of Washington. Uh, the term topping out describes the completion of the building structure. This is an American tradition established long ago to celebrate this major milestone, primarily to show appreciation for the hard work of the tradesmen and women and men who make it happen. It is typically celebrated by everyone in attendance signing one of the final steel beams before it's hoisted into place by the trade contractor. This event is documented for posterity and customized t-shirts will be designed by the architect and presented to each trace person. It's truly a significant uh, milestone in the completion of the courthouse and I would encourage everybody to be out there at nine o'clock on October 19th. The next Capital Improvements Committee meeting is scheduled for October 2nd at 11 a.m. and that concludes my report. Brief report. Great. Next up. Executive Committee, Mr. Mustis, Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Executive. Good morning, Jim. County Board members. My first item today is to go into public hearing regarding the amendment of Willow County Liquor Control Ordinance to reduce the number of liquor licenses that unincorporated Willow County. Now moves to go into uh, uh, public hearing. Moved 
by Mr. Muster, second by Mr. Mayor. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Sure. Mayor? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Ogala? Yes. Summers? Yes. Bryce? Yes. Harris? Yes. Trainer? Yes. Benefield? Yes. Fritz? Yes. Gould? Yes. Militello? Yes. Balich? Yes. Wislone? Yes. Winfrey? Yes. Parker? Yes. Staley Ferry? Yes. Dollinger? Yes. Markham? Yes. Hart? Yes. Tuminello? Yes. Weigel? Yes. Ferry? Yes. Cragus? Yes. And Eustace? Yes. Thank you. 24 affirmative. 24 affirmative. We are in public hearing. <laughs> well, basically, this, this amendment reduces the number of liquor licenses. <clears throat> As, uh, liquor licenses get reduced in Will County, uh, unincorporated Will County, whether it's because they went out of business or they incorporated uh, into municipality, and therefore the municipality becomes the jurisdiction for the liquor license. We are now reducing the number that are available to the current number that are in use. Now what this does for the <coughs> residents of Will County, it gives them a public forum if any additional liquor licenses are issued. It doesn't prohibit anyone from applying for a license, uh, uh, but it would, they would go through a much more public process and have public input. And then the board would decide whether they wanted to increase the licenses by one, which would then require another amendment, increasing the licenses. But primarily that's the uh, basis of, of, of this uh, amendment. Any discussion? Anyone from the public wishing to speak on this issue? Anyone from the public wishing to speak on this issue? Anyone from the general public? Any county board members? Today, I'll make a motion to come out of uh, the public hearing by Mr. Mustis, second by Mr. Mayor. Um, all the roll. Sure. Mayor? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Okayla? Yes. Summers? Yes. Rice? Yes. Harris? Yes. Trainer? Yes. Benefield? Yes. Fritz? Yes. Gould? Yes. Lotello? Yes. Balich? Yes. Wiselon? Yes. Winfrey? Yes. Parker? Yes. Stanley Ferry? Yes. Gallanter? Yes. Markham? Yes. Hart? Tumanello? Yes. Michael? Yes. Perry? Yes. Colitis? Yes. And Mises? Yes. Thank you. 24 affirmative. 24 affirmative. Public hearing has been closed. My next uh, item uh, is 18261, amending the chapter <coughs> 10 of the liquor regarding <coughs> number of liquor licenses <coughs> and for approval. Moved by Mr. Muster, second by Mr. Mayor. Any questions? Any <coughs> questions? <coughs> Previous roll by, by Mr. Mr. Gould, second by Ms. Parker. <coughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, motion has carried. That's 18262, authorizing the county executive to negotiate and execute a contract with Carpel Solutions for case management. Uh, and I'll move for uh, <coughs> approval. Moved by Mr. Mustis. Second. Second by Ms. Fritz. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll call. Oh. Previous roll call by Don, Mr. Gould. Mr. Gould, second by Ms. Parker. Question, Ms. O'Gala? Uh, not a question, really, just a comment. I, I, as chair of the anti rights Committee, I want to thank everyone from the state's attorney's office, from public defender, probation, as well as the IT department. We have three intensive days looking at different, uh, three intensive days with three different uh, vendors to collect the case management software. And um, I think that everyone who will be using um, the Carpel system will be very happy because it is, it is one easy spot to go and find all the information related to the case. So the attorneys and can, will no longer have to look on the paper. It should make the whole court process more efficient. I believe that it will also make it very much more uh, productive and that everybody on both sides of a case Will be happier because of the move everything along on Twitter. I, I think that um, if you have the opportunity to come to any of these sessions where they're happy to uh, give a presentation of it moving forward, then you guys should do that, and that um, I was very happy to uh, be actively involved with this. Thank you. Thank
motion, a second. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion is carried. Next to have resolution 18, uh, 263, authorized the county executive to execute a contract for housing services for case managers. System. I'll move for approval. Moved by Mr. and Mrs. Moved by a second by Ms. Hart. Any questions? Any question? Previous roll by Ms. Rice, second by Ms. Summers. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion has to carry. Next we have 18265, I'm sorry, 264, amending the Willow County Business Travel Reimbursement uh, Regulations and I'll move for approval. Moved by Mr. Mustis, second by Ms. Melmotello. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Winfrey, second by Ms. Lone Staley, Staley, Farrell, Farrell. I got it. Yeah, got it. <laughs> anyway, uh, any, um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, mo motion is carried. Next we have 18265, amending uh, a bid for communication that, that headsets for Sheriff Swatton, and I'll move for approval. Moved by Mr. Minister, <coughs> by Ms. Mr. Benefield. Any questions? Any, any questions? Mr. Mayor, did you have a question? Previous, Previous roll by Mr. Mayor, second by Mr. Brooks. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion has been carried. <laughs> 18266, declaring various equipment surplus and authorizing disposal, and I'll move for approval. Moved by Mr. Minister, second by Mr. Mayor. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Pallet, second by Ms. Dallinger. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion has carried. 18267, <coughs> adoption of the bargaining agreement for registered nurses at Sunny Hill Nursing Home, and I will move for approval. Moved by Mr. Muster, second by Ms. Summers. Any discussion? Any discussion? Previous roll by Ms. Winfrey, second by Mr. Harris. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, no motion has carried. 18268, authorizing the county executive to execute the updated Title VI program, and I will move for approval. Moved by Mr. Muster, second by Mr. Mayor. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll for Mr. Second <coughs> by Mr. Waggle. All in favor, favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, motion has carried. 18269, replace of hires for the supervisor assessments office, and I'll move for approval. Moved by Mr. Musa, second by Mr. Brooks. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Winfrey, second by Mr. Markham. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary motion has carried. 18270, replace of hires for Sunny Hill Nursing Home, assistant administrator, and I'll move for approval. Moved by Mr. Musa, second by Ms. O'Gala. Any questions? Any other questions? Previous roll by Mr. Tuminello, second by Mr. Ballage. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary motion is carried. The place of hires for uh, Sunny Hill Nursing Home? No, I already did that, right? No. No, no, no you're right. You're right. 18271, the place of hires for Sunny Hill Nursing Home. And I'll move for approval. Moved by Mr. Muster, second by Ms. Melotello. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Winfrey, second by Ms. Rice. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, motion has carried. Our next meeting of the executive committee will be October 4th at 10 a.m. And uh, uh, next I'll uh, uh, move to approve the appointments by the county executive. Moved by Mr. Bermuda, second by Mr. Brooks. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Summers, second by Ms. Parker. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion has carried. That concludes my report. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next up is public comment, and we have a number of people that have um, uh, want to come up and make a public comment. Um, and um, first up is a Doreen. Swindle. Swindle. Yes. Yes. Please come forward.
Story Swindell. I live at 2796 Rolling Meadows Drive, Naperville, and reside within the County of Will. I am here today to speak to you about the 95th Street Extension Project, the sound wall within Will County, Naperville, and Bowlingbrook. Whether or not we were within federal guidelines for a noise abatement study, Brook Crossing residents are Will County residents and a part of the 95th Street Extension Project. After the public hearing on June 12, 2008, Will County Department of Highways, as the lead agency for the proposed improvements, held five other individual group meetings. This action of no additional group meeting for Will County residents within Brook Crossing Estates excluded and silenced our voices on the impact 95th Street Extension has had on our homes and lives. This is a fact whether we are recipients of a sound wall or not. No Will County resident should be told that you are at the end of the project and did not matter. For crossing the state's residents, feel this is wrong, we pay taxes, and this is taxation without representation. Will County Department of Highways' responsibility is to all Will County residents, not just the ones within federal guidelines. The Will County residents of Brook Crossing Estates request equal and equitable representation and compensation for being excluded from all other individual group meetings. I have a list of requests in the city of Naperville has agreed to work with Will County and the residents to resolve this issue so our county and city taxes can be distributed equally and equitably throughout the project entirely. The residents of Brook Crossing Estates request you to replace the irrelevant eight-foot privacy fence due to increased road elevation to a nine to a 10 foot high cedar privacy fence. Two, for you to plant everybody's in between the east and westbound traffic lanes for noise and visual abatement year round. To reduce the speed limit to 40 miles an hour, enforce the fact that it's not a truck route, and please never exclude residents from group meetings. This is very fair and this is very equitable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next up, Wendy. Wendy, where is the I'd like to thank you for spending a few extra minutes to hear uh, my concerns. Uh, my name is Judy Wooten. I am the supervisor for Shanahan Township. And I'm here to speak on behalf of myself as well as my 
as well as my constituents who do use the IM canal, um, but maybe less today because they no longer feel quite as safe. We're all aware of um, some of the things that have been happening that have been brought to the attention of everyone. And I would like to um, know if there's been anything done to correct some of the flaws that have um, happened in the Sheriff's Department that led to the rapist, Miguel Luna, being able to continue living in the United States illegally and able to commit some of these rapes. I've been told that after taking office, the, chair, um, the sheriff eliminated the criminal intelligence database. They could have helped let the deputies on the street know that there was a federal warrant on Miguel Luna's um, name and for his arrest. I've also read in the newspapers that there was stopped driving for suspended license for over 30 times, and that he was also picked up for soliciting a prostitute. How is it that none of these offenses threw up a red flag that said, we need to look into this guy? How can someone be stopped over 30 times for the same offense and just get a ticket? Why wouldn't that many offenses for the same crime not be elevated to a felony? What caused the officers to stop Luna that many times, but then to give him a ticket each time? Have the employees been instructed not to cooperate with federal immigration officials? I know. The Trust Act doesn't allow you to notify the officials if immigrated status is the only crime. But that is not the case here. He had, you had every right and every opportunity to know if immigration, to, I'm sorry, to notify immigration that you had someone that continually broke our laws, yet nothing was done. Do you regret making these changes in policy? Are you doing anything to correct these mistakes? And do you have any progress that I can go back and tell my constituents to let them know that things are getting better? Because I'm not sure they are. We still have the heroin deaths, the robberies, and the break-ins are rampant throughout Will County. And I just want to know that something like the Miguel Luna case doesn't happen again. And to my county board members, I hope that you take your task of oversight responsibility seriously. If Sheriff Kelly won't tell us what's going on, I certainly hope that you will find out for us. Um, I also have a concern from a constituent that was not able to be here and she asked me to read it for her. Uh, this is from Christine Drum, who's also a resident of Shanahan. I am a concerned citizen, woman, and mother who has followed the case of Miguel Luna since its inception. At the time he was arrested, I was horrified to learn that his heinous and violent, life-changing acts, which he blamed on the devil, were a result of his illegal presence in our country. Sheriff Kelly, you failed the victims, three, three victims, as well as our community, by refusing to crack down on this illegal presence. I am always hesitant to take my children walking on the INM path now. Our Will County Sheriff needs to protect the citizens of the communities he serves. Sincerely, Christine Drum. So I thank you everybody for the opportunity to express my concerns, and I know it's been a long meeting, so thank you very much. Thank you. Next up is Javon Bolton. Someone is stopped with a suspended license, 
they are only given a citation and allowed to leave when officers can't positively identify them? Is it true that Luna was stopped on the same day he committed a rape and then let go? Was the evidence lost in the vehicle? This rapist didn't just slip through a crack. You guys let, had him dozens of times. He had a warrant to be deported by ICE. She, he shouldn't have been here. I am an immigrant, but now I'm a proud American, and I love this country because we are a country of law and order. We have a right to feel safe in our communities, including Will County. At this time, I am concerned for the safety of my family because of the policies that are currently in place in the Sheriff's Department. And I hope that you will see that we need to change them to keep the people of our county first. I think that that is and should be come first to the Sheriff's Department so we can all feel safe in this community. Thank you again for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else that uh, has signed in? Uh, anyone else want to speak from the general public? I would. Oh. Mr. Sheriff? Immigration has a policy on what we are to do if we believe we have someone that's here illegally. And it's correct that Mr. Luna was arrested several times on driving with a revoked license. Matter of fact, in 2010, under the past administration, he was arrested for, in 2010 for driving on a suspended license, was turned over to ICE and not deported. He was turned, let me repeat that, he was turned over to ICE and not deported in 2010. We arrested, we, we made a traffic stop on Mr. Luna in May of 2015. He was brought to our jail. He was booked and fingerprinted. In 2013, ICE came up with a secure, uh, secure communities that was 50 uh, statewide. It was a computer-based uh, database where we went to com uh, digital fingerprinting. We no longer had to do the ink fingerprints. Everything was done uh, electronically. Mr. Luna was fingerprinted on, in 2015. As soon as we hit this enter button, it goes directly to ICE. Goes to the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI. It is incumbent upon them, then, to notify us whether they want to put a detainer on someone or not. And there is no ICE warrant. So whoever's telling you there's an ICE warrant, there's no such thing. There's an ICE detainer and a federal warrant. If they put an ICE detainer on someone and someone's bond shows up to get bonded out of jail, we, have, we can keep that person for 48 hours. If ICE does not come and get him or her, we have no right to hold that person in custody after 48 hours. If the federal warrant is issued on that subject by ICE, then we can hold them. Mr. Luna did not have a federal warrant. And I gotta tell you something, you know, it's amazing how this is coming up right now again. I can't help but think that this is politically motivated. None at all. Because this sounds to me like something that come right off my opponent's wall pieces that he's passing out, because it's all nonsense. We do not have, we cannot make a policy 
that supersedes state law or federal law. We cannot, we do not have an immigration policy. I did not change. We still have the same database that we had, but it's a better database now, with more information that we can, we can access. So, this Luna was written, you got a ticket in 15 by the sheriff's office, both in our jail, ICE was notified, I got the paperwork right here to show you that they were notified that he was there and they didn't give us a detainer. So we had no right to hold him, and I believe the state's attorney could probably attest that we had no right to hold that man. None. So don't blame the sheriff's office or myself. It's the immigration, ICE, that did not come and get this man. And as a matter of fact, our department is the one that locked him up for eight years for the rapes that he committed. Those were our cases, we saw. So, you know, I have an open door policy. I've told this county board and anybody that'll listen, you want to talk to me about anything, please do so. Come call my office. I'll make an appointment. Come and talk to me about anything you want. This is not the forum for stuff like that. So if you have any further questions that reference this, or you need any of this information, I can give some of it out. But as the state's attorney, well, I cannot give out all of our operational well, how will we do operational because then that we would just be jeopardizing the safety of everybody in Will County if we, they knew everything we did from top to bottom. So I hope I answered that. Um, I know we don't have a magical computer uh, in our office that says who's here illegally and who isn't. We don't, believe me, I wish we did. But I can't just notify ICE because someone's not a male or a female white, sorry. It sounds a little bit racist if you ask me, but I can't do that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, uh, Sheriff Gell.
take our emails and give answers because they understand that things happen on the county level and the municipal <coughs> level and the local level. So I, I just wanted to update you on that. And I also might mention that the, the county board members paid their own way. So money did not come out of the, the kitty here to pay for our, our trips. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Ms. Summers? Good morning, everyone. Um, I just would like to say a little bit more regarding Kathleen Burke. Ashley, herself, and the mechanic were um, interviewed by NBC last night, yesterday. So they were highlighted on the six, six o'clock news. I am very proud of the progress this county has made regarding the opioid and heroin crisis, as well as understanding that mental health issues have a lot to do with that. In the past, we have always been reactive instead of proactive. This county is finally recognizing that these are not character flaws. These things happen because of actual health issues. I couldn't be prouder of the work that Kathleen Burke has done, and I think we need to give her an extra hand, as well as our health department, for all their hard work in bringing us forward in this crisis. Thank you. Very nice comment, Mr. Robert. Thank you. Mr. Markham. Thank you, Mr. Je Mr. Executive. Uh, on everybody's desk today, I placed a flyer for the Will County Take Back the Night, if you are interested in attending. It's uh, October 4th at uh, 5 p.m. at Juliet Central in the new Student Center. Uh, this year's speaker is um, Alicia Guerrero, whose daughter, Brianna, was uh, murdered in 2017 by somebody who was stalking her. So if you have any interest in coming out and showing support to survivors of uh, domestic violence, uh, please do so. Um, and I'd also like to take a moment to remember uh, District 10 resident uh, Jim Albritton, who was a police officer in Joliet and a community member who recently passed away. So if you could keep his family in your thoughts and prayers, I would appreciate it. Thank you very much, Tyler. <coughs> Ms. O'Gala. Thank you, Larry. So you gave a nice budget presentation today, and I just wanted to say that this will be the last year that we have to do the budget on our old New World soccer. <laughs> <laughs> I know that Rashawn and everybody, Karen Burke and Melissa and everybody who was involved in selecting the HSO software um, and all the new possibilities that we have with this new software, they're excited. Obviously, they're clapping. And they didn't even know, I, I, they didn't even know I was going to say this, but it's like budget talk makes so much sense. Because the budget process next year, I'm expecting it to be much easier. It'll be so much better for when. When they get a change, they will be able to go right into the software. software. It allows what if scenarios so that they don't have to spend hours and hours and hours outside the software in Excel and penciling and creating all these documents. Um, so I know that, uh, that is, everyone obviously is very excited about it. I am as the ad hoc IT chair. And I also want to thank them because right now everyone is in intensive talks and training with the new HSL software. And it will take a lot of commitment bunch of time, everybody's very busy, so everybody will be putting in more effort so that we can not only do our regular year-end clothes and everything, but also move forward to the new software. So thank you, everyone. Appreciate all your hard work, and um, looking forward to next year's budget. Thank you. Let's get this one done first. <laughs> anyone else? Anyone else? Any county board members? Moving on, announcement by the majority leader, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Executive. Long meeting, but I think we might be able to get out of here before noon if Jim goes last, so we'll see. Um, I just was very impressed today with all of the uh, proclamations just to start out with. What a lot, a great community that we have here in Will County. Outstanding community involvement, not from you know, the folks coming in from Fairmont to the Daughters of the American Revolution, to all the stuff going on with problem courts and our advocacy programs. Um, you, you can't be a community that gets involved like that. And that's where our successes come from, is our community involvement. So uh, a shout out to all these folks that have put in so much time and energy and, and uh, into those uh, things that they've done to make their community better. 
And to you, Mr. Executive, uh, I want to thank you so much for your budget presentation today. Uh, it looks like afterwards the Republicans won't have to fight you again to lower the tax rate. It's done right up front. We really appreciate that. We really do. And uh, the five-year plan is always an appropriate way of looking at it. We may have to allocate our funds every year, but if we don't know where we're going, we'll never get there. So I, I appreciate that. Um, and uh, I, was, I did bring up the uh, trip to Washington in our caucus today, and so Mike outlined all that for you. One of the things that really impressed me about um, this White House, not necessarily all the tweets that go out, because we all have issues with those, but the fact that this White House is so open to the citizens of this country to come in and verbalize their issues to try to work out solutions. It's not just about idle chat. It's about coming in and opening up their doors for anybody to come in. Uh, and so, as Mike said, we were, I think we were the 44th. 44th. Uh, yeah, well, they're all heading here to, to Washington, uh, all, the, all the different states. And so it wasn't just counties. It was all the state legislators and county leadership that was invited to come here. And it wasn't just a one-up. It was an opportunity to start a relationship and a dialogue. And to me, that's probably the most impressive thing. Because nobody was asked what side of the aisle you sit on. They were asked, what's important to the citizens of your state? What's important to the citizens of your community? And really, that's what the White House should be about. And being in the House of the People is was a, uh, a tremendous uh, opportunity and, and thrill. And I just want to end by thanking everyone for all their well wishes last month uh, when I was going through a medical procedure. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Uh, I'm pretty well on the men here. Uh, you will see me limping a little bit as we come and go from the building. but. Uh, uh, Things are going really well, so thank you very much, and uh, good luck on all those elections out there, folks. I'm not worried about it. You know, there is some benefit of being a lame duck and knowing when your day is up. Good luck. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Brooks, minority, Oakland. Good morning, Mr. Executive. Uh, I must apologize. I have to use this as a blockage because Anybody want to see me smile? I told Don Gould I left my smile on my front seat of my car. You can see it on the way out. Uh, however, a picture is worth a thousand words. Men who struck, everybody have this at their desk. Um, please love to see you on Saturday. Mr. Uh, Executive, I also would like to say thank you for your balanced budget. One of the things I always look at the budget is what I call alpha and omega, the beginning and the ending. The beginning you went with, uh, begun with double A, uh, 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 rating, we're still doing a very good job, and you ended also by telling us over time and so many things were worked into the budget, but one of the most interesting things is no cash reserve due, as well as continue updating every year. And that means that we can all as a legislative body and executive office work together as things change in the community. Thank you so much, thank you all, and God bless you. Thank you. Next up, our speaker, Mr. Muse. Good morning, Mr. Executive. Good morning. Once again. Uh, first, I'd like to comment on, on the, the budget. I, I uh, think there was a lot of uh, cooperation uh, and collaboration in this budget process between the County Executive's Office uh, budget people and uh, our Melissa, who's our budget person on the County Board. And I think in the end, we can get a, a much better product to work with. Uh, so that cooperation, I think, really did lead to a, a better uh, uh, product. Uh, and I want to thank all the folks that are involved in the budget. Uh, you know, we start off by getting requests from elected officials and department heads, and inevitably, the requests are difficult because they're always requesting uh, funds that we just don't have. So we leave it up to the, the budget folks to say, well, this isn't going to work. We didn't get it. And they do a lot of work on prioritizing and appropriating uh, funds in the budget that are going to serve the taxpayers at the highest level. So I thank all of well, everyone who was involved in the budget process. Now the county board will get it. 
There will be, uh, Rashada will, will be holding budget uh, meetings so you, you can ask her questions. Uh, to her and Melissa, I'm sure they can ask any question you have or how we came to certain uh, 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 conclusions within the budget. So, uh, yeah, we always tweak it a little bit, but I think there's going to be, uh, uh, at a glance, it looks like there'll be a lot less tweaking by the county board. So, uh, so thank everyone who was involved. Uh, I don't want to beat this uh, visit to the White House to death, but I, I, I'm going to tell you where I also went. And uh, I'll tell you what I found this to be an opportunity. A lot of attendees were downstate folks, mm -hmm. folks in Southern Illinois, Central Illinois, Southern Illinois. And it was interesting to, to hear some of their issues that really are not necessarily issues here in Northern Illinois. But yet, uh, you know, we should not forget about South Illinois. It is, it is part of the state that has the most challenges uh, uh, with employment. I, you know, I want to say they're 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 the you know the further southeast you go in the state, the poorer you peak folks tend to get, and the more challenges they have. And even though some of their issues, and I actually challenge a little bit, but like. Those along the Mississippi, they're worried about their levies and, and the decommissioning of, of levies. Uh, now, we may not uh, think, well, that doesn't affect us here, but does it? It will, perhaps, down the line when the Corps of Engineers say they're no longer going to support things down here in Northern Illinois. So, so it was interesting to, to hear different perspectives within the state, because believe me, and, and Mr. Executive, I'm sure you experienced this on your time on the Senate. The issues, bless you, the, the issues in Southern Illinois and the challenges are a heck of a lot different than they are down here. So, uh, so that was an inter 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 interesting aspect of the uh, visit. Uh, so, uh, those cubs, they just can't quite fix. <laughs> Close, close, you know. But I, I'm excited. I'm more excited about the uh, the hockey season starting and the Bears won a game. So yeah. Yeah, that, that's always a good that's a good sign. So once again, as I say monthly, thank you for all your work and commitment to the folks of your, your districts and